For the entirety of the Zelda series prior to Breath of the Wild, the Sheikah have been a mystery. Elusive shadow folk working in secret to protect and defend the royal family. Even undertaking some of the darkest, most sinister tasks, such as the construction and operation of the Shadow Temple, where the kingdom's enemies were interrogated, tortured, and executed. At most, Zelda games usually feature no more than one or two members of this mysterious tribe. Even in games where they feature somewhat heavily in the story, like Ocarina of Time, which includes Impa, Zelda's bodyguard, and Sheik, the princess's alter ego and disguise. Breath of the Wild, on the other hand, blew this convention to pieces. 120 mini dungeons, more in the DLC, each a personal trial built and overseen by an individual ancient Sheikah monk. An iteration of Kakariko Village, bustling with Sheikah civilians both old and young. Colossal machines with power rivaling that of the gods, constructed millennia ago by the Sheikah. And even a sinister offshoot of the tribe, the malevolent, enigmatic Yiga clan. The Yiga clan reside in the desert, within a Gerudo archaeological site they've since claimed as their own covering Gerudo statues and carvings with their own symbol, a blasphemic inversion of the traditional Sheikah eye. The Yiga are split into various ranks that we see in the game. There are the small, agile foot soldiers, armed with vicious sickles or demon carvers or a duplex bow, the larger, more powerful blade masters, armed with a great wind cleaver, and their leader, Master Koga, armed with nothing but his apparent mastery of ancient arts, who is exceptionally skilled, but rather odd. The Yiga clan are one of the only times we've seen Sheikah fight in the series, and they make use of a set of mysterious, powerful techniques, able to levitate, appear and disappear in magical explosions, manipulate the earth to create gusts of winds and stone pillars, conjure steel balls from thin air, put up blue force fields, and even use what appears to be the Sheikah Slate's Magnesis Rune. Breath of the Wild also features Monk Maz Koshia, Another example of a Sheikah in combat. This time, however, instead of the traitorous Dark Yiga, Mazkoshia is a pure, divine monk, fully devoted to the goddess Hylia, and able to use even more abilities than the powerful Yiga. Mazkoshia is able to teleport, levitate, conjure steel balls and lightning, move the colossal stone platform on which you fight, create eight copies of himself, grow to a monstrous size, and even fire a guardian laser beam. And interestingly, there's a lot of overlap between the abilities of Mazkoshia, a divine monk, and the Yiga clansmen, treacherous turncloaks in service of Ganon. Not only is Mazkoshia able to use moves which previously we've only seen used by Sheikah technology, just like Koga's Magnesis, in multiple instances, both Mazkoshia and all Yiga clansmen will produce small paper talismans, which feature either the Sheikah or the Yiga eye depending on the orientation. And furthermore, before the monk performs some of his more advanced techniques, the Sheikah will meditate as a ring of nine symbols appear around him. The exact same technique used by Yiga foot soldiers before they teleport and execute their downthrust attack. What are these symbols, and why do both Mazkoshia and the Yiga use them in combat? What are the paper talismans that appear, and how can Koga and Mazkoshia use runes, or guardian abilities? Subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and let's look into the secrets of the Sheikah's combat. So, which Sheikah have we actually seen fight in the Zelda series? Excluding Hyrule Warriors, Breath of the Wild of course featured Monk Maz Koshia as the final trial, as well as the various warriors from the Yiga clan, a faction which separated from the Sheikah tribe 10,000 years ago. We see loyal warrior Sheikah during a memory, and creating a champion lets us know that these Sheikah served the royal family, but we don't see them fight. We've also seen Impa fight during Skyward Sword during the showdown at the Temple of Time against Girahim. We sort of saw Sheik fights during Ocarina of Time when Bongo Bongo attacked Kakariko Village, but all we see is her fall into a traditional fighting stance before being blown away. 
One thing that connects both the Yiga and the Shika in Breath of the Wild is the fact that they're based on many aspects of real-world Japan. In particular, the ninja, the covert warriors who were known for assassinations and espionage. I'm by no means an expert on Japanese history, and there are countless videos and articles which will explain the history and characteristics of the ninja better than I ever could, but what's important to Zelda is that the Yiga and the Shika were both closely based on these Japanese agents. Which is fitting for the people known as the Shadow Folk and their evil counterparts to be based on warriors who worked in the shadows. Ninja were incredibly highly skilled individuals, and in modern media often appear as magical, supernatural warriors. We can see both the Yiga foot soldiers and Monk Maz Koshia, when fighting with one-handed weapons, sprint in quickly and immediately retreat, similar to how an assassin would fight. The Yiga foot soldiers use demon carvers or vicious sickles, and Maz Koshia uses a guardian sword plus plus, all weapons which are very powerful compared to other weapons in their tier, but with comparatively low durability, again suiting an assassin. The same is true for the bow used by Yiga foot soldiers, the duplex bow, which while able to fire two arrows for greater offence, has the second lowest durability in the game. And on the topic of Shika and Yiga weaponry, the Wind Cleaver, while not directly connected to Ninja, is based on a Samurai Sword. And its trademark ability to fire blasts of wind which follow the swings of the blade could be based on Kusanagi, a legendary Japanese sword, one of the three Imperial Regalia of Japan. There's an entire legend surrounding this blade, which I won't go into, but it's incredibly famous in Japan, and was supposedly able to control the wind, moving it in the direction of the blade's swing. But the strongest connection between the Shika, Yiga, and Ninjas is the strange magical abilities used by the warriors, when they pause to conjure a wheel of nine letters. Hylian in the case of the Yiga, and Ancient Shika in the case of Monk Maz Koshia. In both cases, these letters translate to read clockwise R, P, T, S, K, J, R, Z, Z, which correlates to the nine syllable seals, known as Kujin or nine symbols in Japanese, a form of meditation. The nine syllable seals are, and I apologize for my pronunciation, Rin, Pyo, To, Sha, Kai, Jin, Retsu, Zai and Zen, and would be uttered alongside accompanying hand symbols. The practice was commonly used in ninjutsu and other martial arts. The Kujin were and are still used as a form of meditation in the real world, but in films, games and anime have evolved into a sort of spell, unlocking the user's arcane abilities and connecting one's physical form with their spiritual self. And in Breath of the Wild, the Nine Seals are represented as this mysterious, magical ability. The user briefly meditates, calming themselves, as the Nine Symbols are projected around them in a red, glowing ring. Yiga foot soldiers use it before they teleport and attempt a downward thrust. Maz Koshia uses it not only in the same way, but also as he summons lightning from the skies or splits himself into nine copies which is an ability also heavily based on a ninja's shadow cloning technique, moving incredibly quickly in such a way that it appears that there are far more than one of them. This technique isn't used by Master Koga or the Yiga Blade Masters, though when the Blade Master's Earth technique is used, their hand glows with the same red energy, implying some sort of connection. As a side note, there's a fantastic series by Gaijin Goomba covering ninja in games. Check out the Zelda episodes after this with the link in the description. Another connection between Maz Koshia, the Yiga, and real world Japan are the paper talismans that appear when they execute certain moves. These small red tokens feature the Shika eye, alongside three other eyes, and of course are inverted for those used by the Yiga. These paper talismans are incredibly similar to a fuda, talismans used to protect against harm, normally hung in the home. However, the Shika and Yiga seem to spawn these paper talismans when teleporting or spawning items, so perhaps they're more similar to Omamori, similar amulets designed for personal use. 
said to bring protection or luck to individuals. Different forms of these amulets are believed to help in different tasks, from education and exams to the warding of evil or good fortune. These talismans also appear within the Yiga hideout, plastered on walls, much like you'd expect traditional Afuda to be, as protective wards. So perhaps we can see both Afuda and Omamori used by the Shika and Yiga, for protection of the Yiga hideout and bringing good individual fortune to the fighters. The huge overlap between the abilities of the ancient Shika, seen through Mazkoshia, and the Yiga reflect the fact that the Yiga split from the Shika tribe millennia ago. Creating a champion notes that 10,000 years ago, the tribe split into peaceful and militant factions, which was around the same time in which the Shika monks, Mazkoshia included, sealed themselves in their shrines. Mazkoshia is an example of an individual who's been frozen in time, still using the forgotten language of the ancient Shika for his nine-syllable seals, while the Yiga, who have passed these techniques down for thousands of years, have adapted to use the more conventional, modern Hylian language. But if the Shika and Yiga are based on the ninja, covert, skilled warriors, then how does it explain Master Koga? the bumbling, overweight master of the Yiga, one of a few villains in the series Link doesn't directly kill. He sees to that himself by accidentally knocking himself down a bottomless pit with a giant steel ball. Well, according to the game's lead structural artist, Manabu Takihara, the Yiga master is based on Japan's Bon Odori dance and temple festivals. The Bon Odori is a dance which varies depending on the region of Japan though typically involves gathering in a circle around a wooden scaffold called a Yagora. The festival itself is meant to honour the spirits of your ancestors, and the Japanese have been celebrating it for over half a millennium. And Takihara tells us that the Yiga themselves do this, apparently routinely gathering around Koga himself, holding nightly events with mighty bananas as prizes. And if we look at one of the rooms in the Yiga hideout, the one featuring the secret door leading to Koga's boss fight arena, we can see a central wooden platform incredibly similar to Japanese Yagora, surrounded by what looks to be Yatai, a sort of food stall which is incredibly common at these dances. So the reason Master Koga fights differently to other Yiga is because he's heavily inspired by a Japanese dance festival. But aside from attacks and abilities based on ninja, Koga and Koshia also use abilities related to their technology. How are these two able to use abilities which should only be possible through the use of machinery? Without a Sheikah slate, Koga can use Magnesis. And without a cannon like Windblight or Calamity Ganon, Mazkoshia can fire a Guardian laser beam. Well, this isn't the only time we've seen a Sheikah use something resembling a rune. All the way back at the very beginning of the Zelda timeline, Skyward Sword, Impa is able to use an ability uncannily similar to the Bomb Rune, where she conjures and drops a small glowing blue orb to destroy the Gate of Time and prevent Girahim from pursuing them. Not only this, the blue shield she casts to block Girahim's assault is incredibly similar to shields used by ancient technology, like the guardians in ancient gear and the barriers surrounding ancient monks in shrines. Impa had no Sheikah slate, and the ancient Sheikah and their tech as we know them in Breath of the Wild were yet to appear for thousands and thousands of years. So it's likely that these sorts of abilities aren't tied to Sheikah technology. Rather, the technology, such as the Sheikah Slate, allows the use of Sheikah magic by those who normally would not be able to. Magnesis, Cryonis, Stasis, even the mighty Guardian Laser could all be various magics learned by powerful Sheikah, just like how Impa was able to use something resembling the Bomb Rune. And the Sheikah Slate, or the Guardians themselves, are able to channel this magic for use by non-Sheikah, or non-magic, individuals. This isn't very far-fetched. The majority of Sheikah relics we've seen in the series accomplish the same thing, granting the user a magical ability. The Lens of Truth, for example, offers a form of clairvoyance, able to see things for what they really are. 
The pirate's charm in The Wind Waker was a form of Sheikah Gossip Stone, modified by King Daphnis, which grants the user telepathy and telesthesia, the ability to see and talk to those who are a long way away. The hero's charm, featuring two Sheikah eyes, allows the user to read the life energy of nearby enemies. So could the Sheikah Slate function similarly? Harnessing Sheikah magic, allowing Link to use powerful spells. I've previously theorized that the blue technology of the Sheikah isn't technology at all, but the pure, sacred energy of the gods. This same blue energy is found in the Chamber of Sages in the Sacred Realm, Godan's Chamber in the Tower of the Gods, and even as the three golden goddesses create the world before time itself. It wouldn't be a stretch to assume that Sheikah technology harnesses this sacred power, considering the Sheikah's connection to the goddess Hylia, rather than working as a conventional computer or machine would. If this is the case, and Sheikah technology is powered by divine energy, then it would explain how Impa, Monk Mazkoshia, and Master Koga are able to use abilities which should only be possible using Sheikah technology. They're performing the magic that the Sheikah Slate or the Guardians mimic. Magic using the sacred power of the goddesses. So not only are the Sheikah adept at ninjutsu, using both real world and fantastical techniques of the ninja, like the legendary nine syllable seals, the most powerful among them may be able to directly channel the power of the gods. It's quite disturbing, in a way, that Master Koga, the leader of the villainous Yiga clan, uses magic which may be sourced from the divine. It makes me wonder if, in Breath of the Wild's sequel, we could see a true evil Sheikah villain. Not the comic relief of Koga, a powerful, calculating Yiga who rivals Mazkoshia in strength, bringing mastery of the ninja arts combined with Sheikah magic to bear against the hero. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Did you know about the Sheikah's Japanese connections? Is there anything I got wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to check out all the sources, articles, and videos that helped me with producing this video, again in the description. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.